Hello everyone, uh, today is Tuesday, February 20th. I'm recording this uh, in preparation for week six. Um, so I wanted to cover a couple of things today in, in this week's lecture. Um, if you take a look at the announcements page, I've uploaded um, the cultural analysis uh, submission link. Uh, you'll notice that if you go here to the announcements, it has uh, the information here as well as a link that takes you directly to where you'll submit the assignment. So if you click on this link, it'll take you to right where you're supposed to submit it. Um, you'll notice that it's worth 100 points. It's due this Sunday, February 25th. Um, I'm grading these anonymously, meaning that um, if you don't put your name on, the, uh, on your document and you save it that way, I won't be able to tell who it is, which means um, I'll grade it uh, all the essays with no bias. If you want to leave your name on it, that's fine. Um, if you take your name off or just put anonymous um, in, the, in where your names should be, I won't take points off. If you if you want to remain anonymous, that's fine. I do that for your benefit. Uh, make sure that you are submitting your document either as a docx, .doc, .rtf, or .pdf format. Uh, Blackboard won't accept things like pages if you have Mac, if your automatic default is saving as Mac, um, or if you're using Google Docs, uh, it, don't save it as a Google Doc uh, file. Uh, again, Blackboard won't be able to open it. And when I do go into grade, it's just going to be a blank document and I'll have to give it a zero. Um, so make sure not to do that. As always, if you feel that you've submitted the wrong document, um, just email me before the deadline the correct document that you meant to turn in and I'll submit that. So when I grade it uh, and I come across your document and it's blank, you'll get a zero at first. But after I've graded everyone's and I can see what grade you have, I can check back to my email and see if you did submit something. Uh, different and if and if you did before the deadline I can go back and change your grade the downside of course is that I'll know it, it's you um, and I won't be able to grade it anonymously anymore but um, I mean that that's on you if you didn't follow instructions and didn't submit you kind of forfeit the the opportunity to be graded anonymously so make sure you are turning in the right document and um, that you're turning it in on time uh, to submit the document you guys should know this already uh, but if you've forgotten you're going to go down here under assignment submission to browse my computer to attach a file. Whatever you do, do not write your submission in this text box. There should not be anything in this text box. Uh, you will browse your computer to you know, find a file, uh, you know, attach something, and then you're done. Okay. If you attach the wrong file, you can always click do not attach right here, press OK, and it's gone. Okay. Once you've attached a file, you can hit um, I agree to submit my paper to the Global Reference Database, which is what I use to check for plagiarism. Uh, it's not the only thing I use, not the only tool, but it is the standard tool on Blackboard. You can add some comments, although that's not necessary, um, and then finally just submit the document. Right? You should receive a message at the top that you've successfully submitted it. If you do not receive that message, there may have been a problem uh, with the file. And again, in that case, if that happens, um, email me immediately. Uh, but make sure you email me the document. Don't email me at 11.40 um, on the night it's due asking me, well, why? Um, I don't know what happened. What am I supposed to do? I'm going to be asleep. And I won't get to your email until the following morning, which will then mean um, anything you do turn in will be late and I can't consider it. Uh, so make sure that you turn things in on time. I do not accept late or incomplete work. Okay. Uh, besides that, let me go back for a second. Besides that, I am going to op upload the week seven module starting tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, you should start expecting to see, and I've already kind of, I've started the, the folder. I haven't made it available yet, but we're going to go over writing strategies, some grammar exercises and comma exercises. Uh, just something to sort of brush up on some writing techniques to make sure you guys are aware of it. Um, I noticed uh, on the summary response essay and a little bit in discussion board, uh, just some problems that I noticed in, in writing things like, you know, uh, punctuation, spelling, uh, general mechanic errors, and uh, also grammar errors for those of you who, who might be new to the language and are still struggling with it. So I just have an exercise that you guys will complete for both grammar and commas. Um, the, they're worth a lot of points, but you can take them as many times as you want. And I'll have more specific instructions in the following lecture. But I just want to give you guys a heads up that that's what you should expect uh, starting tomorrow. All right. In the meantime, um, I want to go look at week six because there's two things I want to cover. Uh, one are the uh, instructions for this 
for this week, which can be broken down to three things. Uh, and two, I just want to make sure that we understand what's due this week and what you're supposed to do. Uh, so for one thing, uh, you guys do need to turn in the cultural analysis essay. That's that's the biggest item due this week. That's due Sunday, February 25th. Again, you can either go to the announcements page and click on that link. It'll take you directly to where you submit it. Or you can go to the week six folder here uh, under course materials. Uh, and you can find this link where it says SA2 and it says submit your final draft here. Okay. Uh, that, and if you forgot where the instructions are, or what the instructions are supposed to be, here are the instructions down here at the bottom. So real quick, I do want to go over this uh, with you just to make sure we understood what the uh, instructions are. Uh, for one thing, uh, I want you to make sure that you write somewhere between 600 and 800 words. Uh, now, some of you uh, submitted for the summary response essay less than 600, and I do not consider your heading, your title, the works cited page, none of that counts towards your word count. It's only your paragraphs, okay? That's the only thing that counts towards the word count. And because of the nature of this assignment, you should have zero research. You should not use any research for this assignment whatsoever. Um, but the question you have to answer is pretty simple. If you woke up tomorrow as the opposite sex, how would your life change? Now, I know that seems really simple, but I want to make sure that we um, understand the, the types of things we could or should talk about. When we think about sex, there's actually three things uh, or three categories we need to talk, uh, consider. One is obviously sex. Then there's gender and sexuality. Sex is like the difference between male and female, right? Uh, and we think of biological or anatomical differences, right? Wider hips. Uh, bigger bone structure, different facial structure, obviously different genitalia and, and other, you know, body parts. Uh, but that's obvious, and that's not something we really need for this essay. Um, you know, if you if you start off your essay saying, you know, I have to go to the bathroom differently now, or I need to shave my face now, like, obviously that's not really important uh, and obvious, right? We don't need that. So forget about the difference between sex. That's not that big a deal. But I am more concerned with gender and sexuality. So gender is the difference between man and woman, not male and female, right? It's the difference between man and woman. If you are male, we wouldn't say that automatically makes you a man. Just like if you're female, it doesn't automatically make you a woman. There are certain characteristics or qualities that we assign to what makes a man a man, which is why we can look at a woman, someone who's female, for instance, and say, well, she's, she's actually like kind of like a man, right? And what we mean by that, I don't know, and that's what you're going to talk about or can talk about in this essay. Really, what, what qualities make you a woman or make you a man, depending on what you're going to change into, right? If you're a, a female and you're going to become a man now, um, the key question, of course, is, you know, how are you going to treat others and how are others going to treat you based on your gender? How do you fulfill the role of being a man? And for uh, you men in the class, if you become a woman, how, 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 what do, roles do you have to fill now? Some of you might be parents, and even though parents, we, we assume to think, like, you know, well, they, they fill out the same job, right? They take care of the home, they, they take care of kids, and so on and so forth. Yes, but what sort of qualities or sort of uh, performances or behaviors do they have to have? Um, are mothers and fathers the exact same, or are there different things you'd have to do now? If you're a mother right now, what would you have to do to become a father? If you're a father right now, what would you have to become or do differently to become a mother, and so on? Okay, so that's, that's gender. And the last thing I don't have too many students talk about, but it's still important, is sexuality. So sexuality is a difference between like straight, gay, uh, bisexual, or transsexual, right? And so the difference here is that even though, let's say you are a male right now and you become female, you could still be straight, right? If you're straight, if you're a straight male, but you become female, you're still straight, which means you're now attracted to men. If you are a female and you're straight, that means you, would, you become a male and now you're attracted to females. And this, again, this pattern continues. If you're gay right now and you're a male, uh, so that means you're attracted to males right now. If you switched it over to a female, well, now you'd be attracted to females, you become a lesbian. And so on and so forth. So your sexuality will still remain the same. My question, though, is how do you interact now with the opposite sex, or, or not necessarily opposite sex, but your, um, the sex of your attraction? So um, these are, again, questions that you can answer, 
And you can think about it in terms of, you know, how does my performance or gender change depending on where I'm at? We already talked about home, right? We talked about parents and, and um, how those roles change in your home. But think also about how your role would change as a man or woman at work or at school um, or with your, uh, not just your immediate family, but your extended family. Um, how would it change if you're going to a job interview? How would it change um, if you're on the road just driving and you get into a car accident? How does it change when you go to court or have to deal with a lawyer? Um, how does it change when you go to the doctor's office and so on and so forth? Right. So these are just sort of things that you can think about. Um, the, the key here, though, is that this is going to be a formal essay, um, so it's not a narrative, and I made a note of that here. Uh, I don't want you to tell a story, okay? Um, lots of students before have, have, have done something like, you know, today I woke up as the opposite sex, and so I went to the bathroom, and I found out I had to do things differently, and then I went to work, and this is what happened, and then I went to school, and this is what, you know. It's not, it's not a story. It is an essay, so you are going to carefully pick what aspects you want to focus on, right? What parts of your life um, or circumstances in your life do you want to focus on on how those things will change from now on? So rather than thinking of it in first person, try to write this essay in third person, right? How um, if you were looking down from the heavens and looking down on your life right now and you changed um, sex, you know, how, how are you going to act from now on? Um, you could use the first person, by the way. That's perfectly fine. Um, so long as you're using examples of yourself to support a bigger argument. And this is important. You should be making an argument throughout this paper. So let me show you here. Um, I have a, a, a better breakdown of the parts you need. Here it says, your paper should have a clear and separate introductory paragraph that contains a clear organizing thesis statement that will give your readers a guide to what you will discuss in the rest of the essay. So there needs to be either some argument or at least a, a breakdown of how you're going to uh, address this question. And this is why it's called an analysis. Analysis literally means taking something whole and then breaking it into its parts and looking at each part to study each one. And when you do, you get a better idea of what the whole is. Here in this case, we're breaking down gender into its different parts, uh, studying each part to see, well, what does that say about the gender as a whole? Okay. So your thesis should be doing something like that. The body of your essay should be divided into no less uh, than three paragraphs. And, and of course, each paragraph is going to function differently depending on what it is you want to talk about in each paragraph. And finally, your essay should conclude with a clear and separate final paragraph that wraps up your ideas. Now, here's the key. You should not bring any new information into that last paragraph, and you shouldn't restate your introduction. Also, you shouldn't simply summarize what you've already discussed, okay? Instead, you should give your readers a sense of an ending, a final overall thought that gives your readers something to consider, perhaps um, a question that hasn't quite been answered, uh, or perhaps something, remember, the bigger picture, you know, now that you've looked at these three different things, well, what does that say about the gender as a whole, right? Uh, or what does that say about how you view that gender as a whole? Okay, uh, finally, make sure you give your paper a title uh, I, should, I do not want to see something like Essay 2 or some other generic title. Um, I saw a bunch of you, for summary response, put summary response or Essay 1 um, or, oddly, Declaration of Independence, right? You didn't write the Declaration of Independence. Thomas Jefferson and the other founding fathers did. You're just responding to it. So your title should be unique. It should reflect what it is you're saying in your paper. Uh, and then I just have a quick note about what I'm, I'm going to be grading for. Um, so those are the instructions for the uh, for the cultural analysis essay, and again, those will be turned in here, in the week six folder, under essay two cultural analysis. Okay, or again, if you go to the announcements page, I'm going to go to the announcements page real quick. Uh, you can click on this link that I put under the announcements. Uh, when you click that link, it'll take you straight to where you're supposed to submit the paper. Okay, so let me go to back to week six and, and let's talk about one other thing or two more things. The other big uh, assignment is this short video reflection. Uh, so rather than doing a, a typical or normal uh, discussion board where you post to some question and then you have to respond to three other people and so on and so forth, um, I'm going to do something different here and you're actually going to do this again about three more times throughout the semester. Uh, maybe two more times, I haven't decided. Um, 
But the idea is pretty simple. You're going to uh, create and upload a short two minute video in which you reflect on the semester so far. You will upload your reflection uh, to YouTube and then share that link in your discussion board post. Uh, if you don't have a YouTube account, you'll need to create one and I provided instructions in a Word document, which is right here, how to record and upload a video to YouTube. Uh, so what you're doing for this, uh, or the question you're trying to answer is, how has this course impacted you? And that's very broad and I, I did that on purpose. Um, I didn't want to make this a really hard assignment. It's just really just your thoughts. It's a reflection. Um, now, some of you might have questions about how to upload or how to record. Um, I don't have actually too much information on how to record a video because that depends really on the device you're using. If you're using a laptop, um, you know, that depends on the software you're using. If you're using your phone, it depends on what phone you have and which app you're using and so on. Uh, I can give you some general advice and so if you run into any problems, you can contact me by email, text your phone and if it's urgent, just text me. That's much faster. I'll get it quicker and respond um, quickly. Um, the post, and again, you're, you're not necessarily, you don't have to reply to every, uh, anyone, but I, I hope you do. But the, the main post, your video, is due Saturday, just before the uh, cultural analysis is due. Okay, so uh, real quick, if you're not sure how to create or upload uh, a video to YouTube, um, I have instructions here, and I'm going to open them up for you real quick. Um, I've included a description uh, of, of the instructions, but I've also included these images for you to help you out. Um, so first, generally, you need to have a Gmail account. Um, YouTube and Gmail are obviously connected, so uh, you need to have a Gmail account. It's not like you have a YouTube account that's separate. Um, and I have you know step-by-step -step instructions on how to create a Gmail account, um, how to uh, then create a YouTube account. So he, just follow these steps. Once you've created a Gmail account, you can go to YouTube and sign in here. Once you've signed in, uh, it'll give you some instructions on how to create a channel. And once you create a channel, then you can go to Creator Studio and upload your video. Now, I have this, again, really long description for how to record a video, but um, I left it sort of general since I don't know what device you'll be using to record. If you don't know how to record, again, text me and I can try to walk you through uh, these instructions. And if for whatever reason you're just having a really, really hard time, uh, you can call me too and we can go through that. Um, you will, however, I will say you do need a camera and a mic. Okay. Uh, most smartphones, if you have a smartphone, I have an iPhone. If you have a smartphone, uh, you can pretty much use that. Um, if you have an Android device, iPhone, uh, pretty much, or Samsung, anything that has a camera and a mic will, can record video. Um, I prefer to record on my laptop. In fact, um, I've done interviews before on my laptop where um, I, like I use Skype and so on. So that's what I prefer. Uh, but I did upload a video through my, my smartphone about uh, a week ago just to try this out. And it works just fine too. Um, but then once you have created the video, then it's just a matter of going into YouTube, uploading it, um, and then taking the URL and copying it into Blackboard. So if you get, I have these instructions here. I would read through them carefully. If you get lost or confused about something, please feel free to, to text me or, or email me. Okay. And again, that's due uh, Saturday. Let's do Saturday. Okay. The last thing I need you to do for this week, um, so the three things so far, it's the, the essay, the video reflection, and the last thing is just an email. I want you to send me an email from your UTRGV account updating me on the prog on your progress in the class. And I have some questions that you can think about as you answer them. Um, I, I stress that it needs to be from UTRGV because I can't discuss grades or any assignments to a non-UTRGV account. I've had several of my students so far this semester email me from Gmail uh, or Yahoo or Hotmail. I can't respond to those. Uh, I had one student who, because she asked something very, very generic, I was able to respond to her. But generally, I cannot respond to UTRGV or to non-UTRGV accounts. So make sure you, you, you use your TV, UTRGV account. Um, you can access it through Office 365. Um, or if you have Outlook installed, like right here, this is Outlook. If you have that installed and linked to your UTRGV account, you can email me from that too. Okay, um, I think that's all I wanted to cover. Again, for this video, I will have the... Uh, this video and next week's 
uh, con course material folder uh, uploaded by tonight or tomorrow. Uh, and then if you guys have any questions, again, feel free to contact me. Thank you.